Hello. Today we get to start a new chapter in our lives. That's very exciting. You know, if I'm being honest, I'm kind of getting tired of polynomials and rational functions and uh, blah, blah. I'm ready for a change of scenery, you know? And that's what this chapter is all about. So it begins with exponential functions, which you've probably seen before. It's just like a base, so a number, any number you can think of. Think of any number you want. And then raise it to the x power. So in x changes, so x could be any power you want. That's the kind of function we're looking at. And those ones, usually you see them in real life modeling, like population growth, you know. You ever heard someone say, oh yeah, the population of such and such is uh, growing exponentially, you know. That's what they're talking about. And I think some of the examples in this, in this, um, these notes here talk about population. But there, there are other applications of it as well, not just population. But we'll see what kind of, see how to use our calculators to evaluate exponential functions. Because that's, that's usually how it works. A lot of them, they're too complicated to have to do in our heads. Which I guess is kind of bad because I don't like complicated things, but then kind of good because I don't have to think very hard. My calculator is going to do the thinking. It's kind of bad and good. And then we'll see how to graph exponential functions, what the graphs look like, and, you know, kind of explore exponential functions in general. But the first objective is just evaluating exponential functions, and these ones happen to be applications in real life. So let's try, let's look at this guy first. The exponential function f of x equals, okay, this, one, this is not pretty, but in real life, the functions aren't really pretty. 42.2 times 1.56 to the x power. So notice that the 1.56 is what's in the parentheses. That means that's the only part of this that's being raised to the x power. So it's like it's 1.56 to the x power, and then whatever you get, then it's times 42.2. So 42.2 should not be raised to any powers. But they say that that models the average amount spent f of x in dollars at a shopping mall after x hours. That's kind of interesting. So it looks like it's an exponential function, so... And it kind of makes sense. If The more time you spend at a mall, the more money you're going to spend. I guess it's probably the more stores you're going to. The, I don't know. The more tempted you're going to be. Da, 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 da. Okay, so they want to know, what is the average amount spent to the nearest dollar after three hours? Let's see. But then they said, notice that they said f of x is in dollars, because that's the amount spent, and then x is hours. So it kind of re reminds me of what I need to do. X is time, and then f of x is a amount spent, I guess. Amount spent. That way I know if they give me a number, I know what to um, what to do with it. Because they told me three hours, so either I'm going to replace three for x or replace three for f of x. But hours is time, so that must be an x value. So it looks like all I need to do here is take the function they gave me and replace x with three. Which means I'm evaluating f of 3. So I'm just going to rewrite this guy exactly the same. Oops, 42.2 times 1.56, except the x is now a 3, because that's the, the value that they want me to evaluate it at. And this one I'm going to use a calculator. So remember on your calculator, calculator, I would do 1.56, and then I guess it depends on your calculator. I'd type that in, and then mine anyway looks like it has, where is it? a little caret button, so mine has this button. If you see that on your calculator, you know that's the right one, and then the three. Although I think some people have, let me see, I'm going to do it in a different color so I know it's not necessary. It's like, it looks like a Y to the X button. That's the same thing as the caret button, this guy, or X to the Y, something like that. So it's, you're going to have one of those three buttons, either this, this caret like I have on my calculator, or the Y to the X, or the X to the Y. Either way, you're going to do that first and then multiply by the number in the front. 42.2, whatever you get by 42.2. Okay, let's see what we get here. F of 3, okay, na 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 na. So like I said, on my calculator I'm typing 1.56 and then to the power of either that caret button or the y to the x button, 3, and then I press enter, and I'm getting some decimal number. I'm just leaving it on the screen. Now I'm going to press multiply 42.2, and I get 1... Or it's about, because you have to round it, 160.21, if you round it to the nearest dollar like they asked for. That's interesting. So if you spend three hours at a, at a mall, you're probably going to spend about $160. I don't know about that. Man, that kind of makes me think I'm really cheap. Because I take my daughter to the mall all the time, and we just walk around, and point, she points things out, and I don't buy anything. I mean, sometimes I'll buy a piece of a pretzel or something. Okay, I'm cheap. That's what I'm learning from this problem. Okay. Gotcha. Whatever. There's worse things to be in life. Am I right? 
Let's see. No, 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 no. Then the, they've got another function. That's I kind of like these ones. They're kind of interesting because you get to see what exponential functions relate to in real life. So here's a new function. They said that it models the population of India. Okay, so we've said population. That makes sense. It should be exponential da, 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 in millions. Okay, so i got to remember that. f of x is the population in millions. Okay, da, 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 da. Equals the population. You don't have to write this down, but for some reason it helps me to write it. So I remember which one's which. X is what and f of x is what. Da, 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 oops. Arr, in millions. There we go. And then x. What was that standing for? Do, do, now, now. Um, x years after 1974. Okay, so x is the number of years of years since 1974. All right, so that, that helps me. So I know if they give me a number that has to do with population, I replace f of x with it. But if they give me a number that has to do with the number of years or, or a year, then I know it's going to be an x being replaced. And they do give me a year. The year, let me, so let me write that down here. Year, let me do a different color. Year is 2028. They want to know the population in mil, to the nearest million in the year 2028. Let's see. So for X, I'm not going to just put 2028 in X because they said X doesn't stand for the year. It stands for the number of years since 1974. So what I have to do is subtract 1974 from this number. And that'll give it to me. So it's, let's see. 26 and 28 makes 54. Yeah, all right, so 54 years is how long it's been. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Huh? From 1974 to 1928, 54 years have passed. So I'm trying to figure out what is F of 54. And F was the 574 that I highlighted in green up there, times 1.026 to the 54th power. So I'll replace that guy. 54 goes here and here. And then I'm going to do the kind of the same thing on my calculator that I did in the last one. I'll put, I'll do the, what's the thing that's being raised to the power? It's 1.026. I'll do the, to the power of button, which is the caret or the y to the x. And then 54, enter. I'm getting, on my calculator right now, before I multiply by 574, I'm seeing 3.999 something something. So if you see that, that's a good sign. But I have to multiply that now by 574. And I get, let's see, and they want us to round to the nearest millions. 2295. It's 95.4, but they said this is in millions, so I'm rounding to the nearest whole number now. That's how many millions da, 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 of people. All right. Interesting. And that was in, okay, that's in 2028. So they're projecting a future year's population. Interesting, right? No? Not really? I think so. All right. And then the next objective is now we want to we want to know what exponential functions graphs look like. But clearly we're starting with a very simple function compared to the ones we were looking at in the previous objective. We just kind of want to know what simple exponential functions graphs look like and then I think we can kind of extrapolate if we have complicated graphs. So this is this is what you do. I think you've seen this before. If you don't know what the a graph looks like, you just keep plugging in x values. So that's what we have going on there. There's a table full of x values. We're going to plug um, plug those into f of x equals 3 to the x. So if I want f of negative 3, I'm plugging that into this guy. So it's 3 to the power of whatever I'm plugging in, negative 3. So this might be a good time to review some of the exp exponent rules, um, if you don't remember them. Exponent rules, because they come in, in handy in this section especially. One of them is if you raise something to a negative power, that really means one over that thing. It's like you're creating a fraction. So that means that what I'm evaluating here, three to the negative three means one over three to the third. And three to the third is 27. So it's really a fraction, one over 27. And now let's try an, the next number, negative two. I think it'll kind of go a similar way. If I put negative two in there, it's three to the negative two. And notice the base is not changing because the function they gave me was 3 to a power. So it's going to be 3 to whatever x value they want. 3 to the negative 2, like we did before, means 1 over 3 to the second power, which is 9. So it's 1 ninth. And then we'll do the same thing for negative 1. That's the next x value. 3 to the negative 1 means 1 over 3 to the 1 power, which is just 1 third. And then the next x value they want is a 0. 3 to the 0 power, that's another exponent rule. 
is one. Anything to the zero power is one. So we'll do that. We'll maybe put that over here. Let's see. A. And remember A. And these kind of rules. A could be anything. It could be three. It could be four. It could be negative ten. It could be negative seventy-five thousand or whatever. Anything to the zero power is one. I don't care what it is. I could even say happy face to the zero power is one. Heart to the zero power is one. I don't know. If I was a better artist, I could say unicorn. Oh, God. Why did I start that? There we go. That's pretty good, right? Look at that. Unicorn to the zero power is one. Whatever. I don't care what you're raising to the zero power. It's going to be one. And then now the next power they want us to raise three to is a one. F of one is three to the one power, which that's pretty easy. That's just three. And I'm substituting two in. F of two is three to the second power, which is three times three, nine. F of 3, I'm raising 3 to the 3rd power now. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Alright. And our job is just to plot these points and kind of see if we can connect the dots. So the points we came up with were negative 3, 1 over 27. Negative 2, 1 over 9. Negative 1, 1 third. Um, 0, 1. 1, 3. 2, 9. And then 3, 27. See if we can kind of plot those. Negative 3, and then 1 over 27 is really, really small. So I'm going to just kind of put a point that's just barely above the, um, the x-axis, just to kind of show it. And then negative 2, 1 ninth, that's still super close to the x-axis, but I just kind of force it to look like it's higher than it was before. And then negative 1, 1 third is still pretty low. 1, 3 would be... Oh, wait, 1, 3. Oh, sorry, 0, 1 would be here. 1, 3 would be here. 2, 9 would be here, and then 3, 27, that's going to be way the hell off. I know that one you might not, you don't have to plot that since it's off the grid, but it might be way the hell up here, like that maybe, <laughs> I don't know. If you connect those dots, let's see, it looks like it's going upward, obviously. As, as x gets larger, 3 to the power is getting larger, so it's going to go up to infinity. And then these guys are kind of, they're actually approaching an asymptote. The asymptote's the x-axis. Oops, dang it. I wasn't supposed to cross the x-axis. I was supposed to get closer to it. Here, let me get closer to it. That's one thing to notice is that the x-axis, or the line y equals zero, same thing, is a horizontal asymptote. Asymptote. Yeah. Not that it matters, but hey. Or they didn't ask for that. But that's what the graph of the basic exponential function looks like. On the left side of the x, uh, uh, sorry, the left side of the y-axis, it's getting closer and closer to the x-axis. It's never going to cross it, but it's getting closer. And on the right side, it shoots upward really quickly. Now let's try to graph something with a fraction. So this is kind of interesting. Instead of a whole number to a power, let's say it's a half to a power, or you know, a fraction. See if that changes the graph, or if it does, in what way does it change the graph? So I have the same values to plug in. I might as well plug them in. First, they want negative 3 going in there. So it's 1 half to the negative 3 power. This might be a good time to remind ourselves this other, another exponent rule. What happens when you raise a fraction to a uh, negative power? Um, all that unicorn stuff was kind of silly. Um, yeah, so if I have a fraction, let's say a over b, I think they usually express it as to a negative power, that flips the fraction upside down. So instead of a over b to the negative m, it's b over a now to the positive m. So yeah, if, if your base is a fraction, it just flips it upside down. Now that means negative one half, or sorry, positive positive one half to the negative three is, let me see, the reciprocal of that, flip it upside down, two over one, now to the positive three, which is just two to the third, or eight. So I got one point, I can write that down. Two, or sorry, negative three comma eight. There's one point. And then we plug in negative 2. I think it'll go a similar way. I'm raising 1 half to the negative 2 power. That means I'm flipping it upside down. Let me use a different color to differentiate. Now it's 2 over 1. Now it's to the positive 2 power because I flipped it. That's 2 to the second power, or 4. So there's another point. Um, let me try the next guy. Negative 1 going in there. That's 1 half to the negative 1 power which is like the last one. I'm going to flip it upside down and make it 2 over 1 instead of 1 over 2. Now it's to the positive 1 power. So it's really just 2 to the 1 power or 2. Alright, and then I think from here it gets a little easier. Because the negative powers are pretty difficult. 
if I plug in 0 for x, it's 1 half to the 0 power, but we said anything to the 0 power is 1. Now we're substituting 1 in, that's 1 half to the 1 power, but anything to the 1 power is just that thing, so a half to the 1 power is a half. And then we'll substitute 2 in, 1 half to the second power, that means 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 fourth. Or you could think I'm squaring the 1 in the numerator and squaring the 2 in the denominator. And g of, with 3 inside is 1 half to the third. Yeah, like we said, you can um, cube the first, the, the numerator, <clears throat> excuse me, 1 to the third power is 1, 2 to the third power is 8. So we got a bunch of points. Let me write them down. It was negative 3, 8, and then negative 2, 4, negative 1, 2, 0, 1, and then it was 1, 1 half, 2, 1 fourth, 3, 1 eighth. Okay. Let's see how that looks when I graph it. We got negative 3, 8. Let's see. Da, 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 da. He was about, he's about right here. Negative 2, 4. Okay, he's here. Negative 1, 2, 0, 1, um, 1, 1 half, 2, 1 fourth, 3, 1 eighth. So it kind of looks like this, a similar pattern to the previous one. It's going shooting up on one side of the y-axis, going upward forever, and the other side it's going closer and closer to the x-axis. So still, in this one as well, the x-axis is still a horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote. And you know, they didn't... Well, we don't have it written down anywhere here, but we should probably point this out. Let me see. I'm going to... Maybe I'll write it hmm, at the bottom of this page, because it's right next to the graphs. Because notice, yeah, these two graphs look really similar. It's just they look like mirror images, because part 2a, when we had a base of 3, it got closer to the x-axis on the left side, but on the right side is where it shooted up, you know, up to infinity. But the other guy, when it was a half to the x-power, it shoots up to infinity on the left side and gets closer to x on the right side. So whenever you have an exponential function, it's going to look like one of these guys. It's just I need to narrow down when it's going to look like one and when it's going to look like the other. So maybe I'll kind of narrow it down down here. f of x equals a to the x, where a is just general for now. Um, da -da -da. We'll, let's see, we'll kind of specify when it'll do what. First of all, if a is greater than one, let's see. So like um, the first one we did, the base was three, which is greater than one. So we'll just kind of describe it that way. But notice the base in the second one was less than 1. That's kind of the cutoff point between when, it, when it'll be going increasing to the right or decreasing to the right, kind of. Da -da -da, the graph increases left to right to right. So you know, it kind of looks like um, this. So it looks like the leftmost graph that we graphed up there. But if a is um, less than 1, like the second one we did, the, the graph had um, a base of 1 half, or the function had a, a base of 1 half, um, then the graph decreases left to right. So it's kind of the idea. Yeah, that's, that's the cutoff point. So it'll look like one of these two, you just got to say, okay, what's being raised to the power here? Is that going to be greater than 1 or less than 1? And then you can tell which of these two graphs it's going to look like. But it always looks like one of those two, which helps. So if you kind of memorize those graphs, then you should never have to do this over again where you have to plug points in because we've already memorized it by now. All right, let's use that information to graph. Da, da, da. Use the graph of f of x equals 2 to the x. Okay, that one, you know what? Um, before I even move on, I'm just going to think about what his graph would look like. The base, a is 2 which is greater than 1. So I already know it's going to be the increasing guy like like we did. It's going to look a lot like um, 3 to the x power like we graphed. But now they want us to graph this guy, which is a little bit of a variation. But all we have to do is do those transformations where I shift it, you know. The 1 adding at the end shifts it up 1 unit. Shift up 1 unit. So that means that the new horizontal asymptote, new horizontal asymptote is at the line y equals 1 because it used to be you know there's a horizontal asymptote right here at the the x-axis but now we're moving everything up one including the asymptote so it kind of helps me anyway to to kind of plot that guy 
Other than that, though, the graph is going to be the same. It goes, ooh, oops, ooh, like that. Something like that. Yeah. And if yours looks a little steeper or a little shallower, is that the word, than mine, then don't worry about it. It's just kind of, they want you to, to know which way it shifts, and also, is it increasing or decreasing? But kind of how, how steep it is is not, that's something we'll nail down later. And this next one has the same basic graph, so I can kind of just copy the original one that we saw here, you know, that we thought about. But now they're shifting it down one because there's a minus sign. Shift. Down one. So I'll do a similar thing. Instead of moving the asymptote up one, I'm going to move it down one. Now it's right below, one unit below the, um, the x-axis. And then I'll draw the exact same graph. It's getting closer and closer to that asymptote on the left because it's increasing. And then on the right it's or, yeah, on the right it's going upward forever. So there he is, okay. Okay, and I think our last few objectives are kind of using using um, exponential functions in real life again. So one thing is that sometimes the, exp the, or sorry, the base of your exponent is going to be a weird number called e. I don't know if you've ever seen that guy. But e, def let's see, the definition. Oh. E, kind of like, you know, I, we said, okay, I, I know it's a letter, but I'm going to say I is the square root of negative 1. I do a similar thing with E. E is about 2.718281828, and then it goes, it actually goes on forever, kind of like pi. That's how I would think of it. It's like pi. You know, pi is a 3.14, and it goes on and on and on, you know? It's a similar number to that, where pi ha has to do with um, circles. E has to do with kind of naturally occurring, I don't know, phenomena that have, to, that have to do with exponential functions. So when you see the base here, e, that's what they're referring to, but you should have a button on your calculator that looks like e to the x. So look for that guy somewhere, button on the calculator, looks like e to the x. I think mine's, it's not ex exactly on one of the buttons, I have a ti30 here. Um, it's, it's, it's above one of the buttons, so I think mine's above the LN button. Above LN button. So I'd have to press second and then that guy. Press second, then the LN button. That kind of, you know, that'll, that'll uh, highlight what's above that button. And mine's in blue writing. If yours is in another color writing, it'll, yeah, it'll highlight that guy. So anyway, that all that to say... Now we can actually figure out what this problem is talking about. It says the exponential function, I'm going to write it lower because I kind of <laughs> kind of wrote a lot of stuff between there and now. It's 1,145 times e to the 0 0.0325x. Okay, that models the gray wolf population of the western Great Lakes. So f of, Okay, so it sounds like f of x is the population. I'm going to write that down before I forget. f of x is population, okay. Sounds good. And then X is number of years after 1978. Number of years after 1978. Okay. Fair enough. So that way, if they give me population, I better replace F of X with it. If they give me the number or a year or the number of years, I better put put it in uh, for X. So it looks like they ask, if trends continue, project the gray wolf's population in the recovery area in 2017. So actually, this problem kind of dated because they're saying project as if it's the future, but 2017 is not the future. Oh well. In 2017, so now I got to think about it because I can't just put 2017 in for x because x represents the number of years after 1978. So x must be 2017 minus 1978, and that should give it to me. All right, and I think it, you get 39. Or yeah, 39. There we go. That's all that just to just to show that we're going to replace x with that guy in the function. f of 39, okay, is going to be the same as the function 1145 e to the power of 0 0.0325 times 39. And this there's kind of a lot going on here, so I got to be really careful when I type this in my calculator. Oh, 39. I think in my calculator I'd probably do I probably do this in stages. I'm going to just write out Everything. Okay, so I got 1,149, and then e to the power of, I'm actually going to do that exponent on my calculator. It's 0 0.0325 times 39. I'm getting 
two, six, seven, five. So that's not a bad idea, just especially if there's a lot going on, do it in stages, you know. Multiply the exponents. Now I'm gonna do e to the power of yada yada. And like I said, e there should be a <clears throat> excuse me, an e to the x above your natural log button, or else it might be it might have its own button depending on the brand of calculator. But for me, I have a Texas Instruments 30, so I have to press second and then the ln button. That shows e to the power of what? And then I'll put 1.2675, enter. And now I can just multiply that by 1,145 now that it's um, displayed on my calculator, but maybe just to show the work in case someone's getting lost with all the calculator stuff, I'm going to write out what I see on my calculator. So that guy. Now I'm going to multiply those guys together, and that should be the answer. Looks like 4,066.99. Five nine seven four. Did they say where to round? Uh, they didn't say where to round, but I guess you know if if you think about the context of this problem, this is the population of gray wolf. So I think I'm probably gonna round to the nearest whole number because what the hell is half of a gray wolf? You know what I mean? What the hell would that even mean? So let's say da 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 gray. Is gray spelled with an E or an A? Why do I always get that wrong? That's embarrassing. Gray. Well, it's an A. Okay. Gray mother f and gray wolves. There we go. Is that a lot? Uh, I guess depending how big the area is, huh? All right, that was fun. Now let's do something similar. This guy, I think it's almost the exact same thing. It's just, here they said, it's uh, talking about um, the percentage of high school seniors who applied to more than three colleges. Actually, that's a lot. X years after 1980, whoop. So I imagine it's probably gonna go up, right? 1980, not as many people went to college, but as you go on, so more people going to college means more people applying to a lot of schools and blah, blah, blah. X is the number of years after 1980. So if they want to know what's going on in the year 2013, X is going to be 2013 minus 1980. So 33 years have passed from 1980 to 2013. Blah, 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 blah. All right, that means I'm just going to substitute that in the function given. The function given, oops, was G of X, sorry. G of X... I'm doing g of 33, the function is 32.7 times e to the power of 0 0.0217 times x, but I'm replacing x with 33, let's see here, 33, oops, 33, beautiful, and I think just, like I said, just to be safe, just so everybody can follow along, I'm going to do this step by step, I'm just going to multiply the numbers that are in the exponent. 0 0.0217 times 33. Oops. 0, 2, 1, 7. Probably help to have the calculator on, right? Uh, 0. 0.7161. Why do I not trust that? Yeah, okay. And now I'm not, I'm not working with the 32.7 yet. That should be the last thing. Now I'm doing e to the power, which means I'm pressing second and then the ln button, e to the power of point, point 0.7161. And I get, and like I said, this part, you don't have to write this out. You can just now on your calculator, take what you see on the screen and multiply by 32.7. But just to show what I'm seeing, to make sure that you see the same thing, I'm gonna write out what I see on my calculator, but now I'm gonna multiply by 32.7 and I get, 66.9184 But now I think, that, you know, because they didn't say where to round, but I'm going to think about the context of the problem. This is supposed to represent a percentage, so maybe I'll round to the nearest whole number. That 9 should round it up to a 67. Seven, six, that means 67% of seniors in the year 2013 applied to more than three colleges. So that's what g of x represented. Then three colleges. Okay. Well, I don't know about you, but my remember my high school guidance counselor was so terrible. He, he didn't tell us anything about when to apply for colleges. So by the time it was time to apply, we all missed the deadline. So no one in my senior class applied to college. I think there might have been one or two, but it's because their parents went to college, you know, and they knew all about that stuff. But anyway, most of us did not apply to college because that D-bag didn't tell us in time and yada, 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 oh well. But that was back, way, way back in the day when no one's parents went to college, you know? So no, the parents didn't really know anything about it. Ah, good times back then, not. 
All right, the next objective is now, actually, these, yeah, this very last objective that we're talking about in this section is all about money. You guys like money? Everybody does, right? Well, it's evil, but then also you want it. You know what I mean? It's kind of a, it's kind of a thinker, actually, but blah, blah, blah. When they talk about compounding, you know, money in, a, in an account, either it's like a savings account or it's a, unfortunately, it could be a loan. If your money's compounding quarterly or daily or, I don't know, a certain number of times a year, that means you're using this um, compound, what do you call it? Compound interest formula. Hello, that's what it's called. Compound interest formula. So you might have seen this before, I don't know, but A stands for like the future amount. Future amount, like how much is your um, is your money worth in the future if it's a savings account, or how much do you owe in the future if it's a loan? And then the one, I think that's pretty clear. The P is the principal, or the initial amount of money that you're investing in your savings account or you're taking out as a loan. Initial amount of money. What else is there? R is the interest rate in decimal form. So that's what you got to be careful of. You know, if they give you a percentage, you got to put it in decimal form. And then N is the number of times a year interest is accrued or compounded. Number of times per year interest is compounded. And they should say that in the problem. And then T, obviously, that, you can probably figure that out. That's time. How many years? Number of years that have passed. You know, how long have you had this savings account or how long have you had this loan? So that's kind of the key. You might you might have seen this before, so you probably already knew that stuff, but just in case. Da -da -da -da. So let's see. And this one they've already worked for us, but we're, we're going to work the next one. This problem says they're going to invest $10,000. So they, they put that for P because that's the initial amount. Um, at an annual rate of 8%, so they changed 8% to a decimal, 0 0.08, and they replaced that in for R. Uh, find the balance in the account after 5 years, so okay, that's T, because that's the amount of time, that's why there's a 5 here. And notice it looks like a 4.5, but it's actually 4 times 5, so if that's kind of confusing looking, that's what they really mean, is 4 times 5, not 4.5. And then what else? Oh, quarterly compounding, that's, so if you think about something's compounded quarterly, that means four times a year, because there are four quarters in a year, you know? So if they said monthly, it'd be 12 times a year. If they said daily, it'd be 365 times a year. What else would they say? Weekly would be 52 times a year, just kind of depending on the language they use. And then it's all about your calculator from there. You're going to type this in your calculator. Try to be careful maybe one step at a time, you know? But you're, you're going to get something like this if you round it. So, okay, I think that's, we kind of have the idea. Let's try to do one on our own now. Um, amount, I'm gonna, just going to write the formula so I kind of remember where things go. P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. Okay. Um, looks like $10,000 is being invested, so I'll put that for principal. Da, da, da. Okay, and then it's parentheses 1 plus, okay, R. In this case, the rate is 5.5%, but if I make that a decimal, that's going to be... You're basically moving the decimal point to the left twice. 0 0.055 over n, okay, n, did they say, da, 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 da. oh, monthly compounding, so that means 12 times a year, 12, all right, and that's, all that's in the parentheses, now that's to the power of n times t, and we already said n was 12, so I'll put that there, yeah, this formula has an n in the denominator inside the parentheses, and then part of the exponent, so it kind of occurs twice, and time, where'd they say time, oh, five years, there it is, so there's five, beautiful, All right. And this one, you know, if, if you want, you can do it in stages, which is what I like to do, just so I don't mess it up. One plus, okay, I'm going to divide these guys, just so I have it all. It's point, let's see, point zero five five divided by 12. I'm going to see how that looks. Point zero zero four five eight three 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 three. That's what I'm getting. And then to the power of, oops, sorry, 60, because 12, oops, ah, 12 times 5 is 60. All right, so we got 10,000 times, and then, you know, one plus this number is just going to be point, one point, blah, 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 blah. So I can copy that exact same decimal, just put a one in front of the decimal. All right, now this looks like something we've seen. I'm going to go, you know, like we did before, this number, 
type this in my calculator, da 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 da. And then that caret button, or whatever, if you have y to the x, whichever one you, you have, 60. And then whatever I get, I'll then multiply by 10,000 when I'm done. 1.004583333 to the power of 60, and then times 10,000. Don't lose any of those zeros. Okay. It's about, if I round to the nearest cent, 13,157.04 dollars. There we go. That's pretty good, I guess. Yeah, so in five years, you pretty much made $3,000 because you, you invested 10000 of it. Is that good? Yeah, that's good, huh? I like that. All right, now the next, the next types of problems here, 4B. Now we have a new formula because I think the language that they use in these examples is a little different. They say um, a sum of $10,000 is, is invested at an annual rate of 8%. Find the balance in the account after five years subject to continuous compounding. That's the key word. Before it was like compounded, you know, monthly or quarterly or daily or they'll say how many times a year. But if they say continuous compounding, then you know you're using this kind of more simple looking formula. Continuous compounding. I always remember this one because there's, I don't know if there still is, but there was a shampoo called Pert Plus. It smelled pretty good actually. But anyway, um, A equals Pert, where the RT is an exponent. So okay, then P, P and R and T stand for the same thing, and so does A. But E is still the number, you know, the number we wrote, 2.7187, you know, 28, da 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 da, on and on. So principal was 10,000. Again, I'm getting tired of that number. That's why they replaced it for P. Their interest rate was 8, but again, you have to change that to a decimal number, 0 0.08. And then time T was 5. But they're not going to mention N, you know, the number of times it's compounding, because we're saying that this is continuously compounding. Pretty much it never stops compounding. And if you type that in your calculator carefully, you should get 14,918.25. So let's try one of those on our own. If I were to read this one, if I didn't even know what formula to use, I'd see continuous compounding, and I know that I need this guy, A equals pert plus PE to the RT. Man, the principle is 10,000 again? Man, I'm getting tired of that. All right, anyway, amount is, all right, 10,000 is the principle. Okay, fine. And then E is just the number that we already know and love, so I don't need to replace that guy. It's on my calculator. R was, okay, the interest rate is 5.5, .5, so R is going to be the decimal version of that, 0 0.055. 0 0.055, and time is 5 years, so that old guy will go here. All right, and then I'm going to do this in stages just to show kind of what's going on. 10,000, okay, E to the, let's see, what's 0 0.055 times 5? Point. 275. Alright, my next step will be to raise e to that power on my calculator. And like I said, you don't have to write that here. Like if you're doing your, um, if you're doing this on an exam or a quiz, you don't have to show every step. It's just good, I guess, in case someone's, I don't know, in case you're not sure what's going on. But when I do e to the power of 0.275, I get 1.3165. 30675 and I would try not to round it until the very end so that you know that number I just wrote is about 1.3 but don't round it because that could actually matter uh, let's see and we'll multiply that by 10,000 all right I'm getting this guy and I think they probably want to round us want us to round to the nearest dollar 0.31 there we go so it looks like we made about the same amount of money huh 3,000 just like the last one we had to do. That was fun. Was it really fun though? I don't know. I guess it depends on your definition of fun, huh? But it was doable. So yeah, so far I kind of like this chapter. In the next couple sections we'll look at logarithmic functions. If you've never seen those, they're the opposite of an exponential function. So, so it's the inverse of an exponential function. Um, they're, you know, they're complicated at first, but once you get the hang of them, they're okay. People usually don't really like them that much. But we'll, it take, it'll take a couple sections. We'll kind of go over it slowly. I hope that'll help.